time and time again, I'm on calls with potential clients and I hear the same tune over and over again. And it goes sort of like this. We've been burned by agencies before and we're just not quite sure if we're ready to work with another agency. So if you're one of these three people, you should watch this video to the end. First, if you're an e-commerce brand owner and has been burned by an agency before. Second, if you're an e-commerce brand owner that's looking to hire your first agency, so hopefully I can teach you what questions to ask and what to look for. And third, if you're an agency owner and you wanna make sure that you actually provide something of value to the marketplace and you're trying to avoid making the industry look worse than it already is. Also, if you're new here, welcome to the channel. My name is Rasmus, I'm the owner of Minix, a performance marketing agency that helps e-commerce brands scale through UGC videos and paid advertising on a performance-based approach, which basically just means that we take a small percentage of whatever money we make you. So in today's video, I wanna break down a couple things so you can understand how to avoid bad agencies and understand why you might be getting run over by all the agencies you're working with. And if you own an agency, you can use this video to kind of check yourself and see how you stack up to the rest of the industry. So without further ado, let's get into it. How to avoid bad agencies 101 because there's a lot of bullshit out there. I'm just gonna cut straight to the chase. There's really three things you wanna do. The first thing is you wanna ask them questions like you would with any other person you're looking to hire. So the questions you wanna ask, it's really three big ones. First thing you wanna ask is, can you show me a recent client that you improved results for and also how did you achieve those results? So this question forces the agency to show you up-to-date case studies so you know that you're not just getting shown some random old case study that's like two, three years ago when the Facebook ad or Google ads industry was completely different to what it is now. It also forces the agency to show you or tell you that like their secret sauce but it doesn't really exist. And if they get all like defensive about it and are like, oh no, we won't tell you how we operate, yada, yada, yada. That's a massive red flag you wanna look for because what they should be selling you on is the implementation, not the information. Like there's so much information out there on YouTube, you could find it out yourself. The reason why you hire an agency is to implement it for you and give you specialized knowledge and specialized implementation that maybe a generic YouTube video or something like that wouldn't teach you. Also, the reason why you want them to tell you their secret sauce is because then you know that they have a product type service and that is good if they have a productized service that means that they consistently can repeat good results and that's what you're looking for you're not looking for someone who's just randomly going into an ads manager and just hoping that you know they can generate good results for the next client having some sort of system that they adhere to is actually what you're looking for so productization is good. The second question you wanna ask is, is your team freelancers or full-time staff? And can I talk to the person who will run the ads? So with this question, what you're essentially looking for is stability. So if the person who's gonna run your ads is not a freelancer, it just provides more stability, right? Because it's harder for that person to leave. It's not necessarily a bad thing if that person who's gonna run your ads is a freelancer. But if I were to hire an agency for myself, I would definitely prefer that the agency we're gonna hire have full-time staff on payroll because then I just know what to expect, right? Compared to if they have some sort of contract that they just pay on a client by client basis. Also, you want to talk with that person who's gonna run your ads. Usually that would maybe not be the case because of time zone difference and whatnot if you wanna do like a three-way call, but you wanna at least just have like a quick 10 minute call with that person just to make sure that his knowledge is actually up to date and he knows what he's talking about because he's at the end of the day gonna be the one managing your money and you don't want someone who's not super sharp on whatever ad platform or whatever you know the agency is gonna do for you. You wanna make sure that that person knows everything there is to know about running the ads because as I said, this person's at the end, they're gonna be responsible for their money. And it's, it doesn't have to be like a 30, 45 minute call. Uh, but we had recently this with a potential client that ended up signing. But you know, he just asked for a quick 10 minute call with Francisco, one of our media buyers, just to kind of, you know, vet him out and see, okay, you know, is this a real person? Uh, does he know what he's talking about? And luckily, uh, he did because I hire amazing people. But yeah, ask that question if the media buyer is not on the sales call with you just to you know quickly bet him out. And then the third question you wanna ask is, do you have firsthand experience with e-commerce? And this is actually a super underrated question that not a lot of clients ask on sales calls. It's something I bring up like consciously on my sales call just because I know it's a big selling point. But basically what you wanna try and figure out is this agency that I'm gonna hire, 
have they actually operated their own e-commerce brands? Because if they have, that gives you an insight into down the line, you know, if you wanna outsource more services to them, like email marketing or conversion rate optimization, or you want them to like tweak small stuff on your website, you know you can come to those guys because they actually been in the battlefield themselves and spend their own money and risk their own money to try and make a living, right? It's not something I would put as a massive deal breaker, but it's just information that's good to know down the line if you know they're successful with the ads they're running for you and you wanna you know, get more of their input on a more repeated basis, then you know you can at least hire them to do more stuff for you. So after you ask your agency these three questions, what you wanna do next is you wanna observe the questions they ask you and you wanna observe their vetting process or lack of vetting process. You wanna look at things like, are they asking intelligent questions themselves? And do their questions indicate that they actually want to get the best results for you? And do their questions indicate that they actually know stuff about the e-commerce world, right? So in the ideal world, your agency on, you know, sales calls or audit calls or however the sales process look like, they would ask you like very high level stuff and also like very low level, just, just like foundational stuff. But in the ideal world, you know, on the sales calls or discovery calls or audit calls or whatever they call it, ideally your agency would ask you, you know, very high level stuff that you would, you know, have to go back and calculate or, you know, find that information for them because maybe it's just not readily available for you because that will give you a very good indication on, okay, do these guys actually know what they're talking about or is it just like average order value and conversion rate, right? Because that's pretty easy to find. But just as a reference, let me just give you some of the questions that ideally your agency should ask you for as like a bare minimum. So they should be asking you for gross profit margins, obviously to calculate break even ROAS. They should ask you about product lead time and what you currently do if your products sell out. Ideally, they should be asking you about your past experience with agencies. They should also ask you about your current content production system. And then they should ask you about top level metrics like growth year over year, conversion rate, average order value, like those more foundational numbers. Now, some of these questions are rather basic, but it's like, you know, important and necessary to just lay a good foundation to understand your business better. And some of them are more high level, like product lead time, which is something that's pretty good to know if or when a certain product sells out. Because let's just take an example, right? If you have a six month product lead time, then your strategy compared to another brand that might only have a 30 day lead time, that strategy is gonna look vastly different, both in terms of when are you actually gonna buy more stock, but also what are you gonna do when you sell out? Because if you have a six month lead time, you need to buy this months in advance and plan ahead, like at least six, eight, 12 months in advance, right? But if you only have a 30 day lead time, then when you sell out, you can just make a super simple pre-sale while you wait for stock to come in. So you wanna make sure that the agency actually asks you intelligent questions and try and drill into your business. If all they're doing on the sales call is just asking you about your goals for the future, your average order value and your conversion rate and maybe your gross profit margin, that gives them no insight into what you're actually doing, but it gives them just enough information to sell you on emotion. And that's something you wanna avoid. Like that's a massive red flag. And so this brings me to the last thing you wanna observe when you're looking for agencies. You wanna observe their vetting process. So let's just try and think about this logically here for just a second. So someone who owns an agency reach out to you on Instagram, email, whatever, with a big bold claim, right? They got your attention. That's usually how we get your attention. You found that big bold claim interesting and booked the call with them. You jumped on that Zoom call and after 30 minutes where maybe you've only talked about your business for 15 of those minutes, they now tell you, look, dear client, based on what you told me, I have 100% certainty that I can make you an extra 100K or make you profitable within the next 30, 60, 90 days. That statement makes absolutely no sense. The people I know in my circle in the agency space and also what we do ourselves is they all have a two-step sales process. Basically, what a two-step sales process or two-call close is, is that I will usually have a 15 to 30 minute call with a client first up front, just ask them like questions for 30 minutes straight and then in between the first call and the second call, in between that, I'll usually have my team do an audit, which takes anywhere from like an hour to three hours, depending on the size of the client. But we do that because we need to know if we can actually get them the results they want or not. And this is not like an easy process. If it's a big client, like we need access to their Shopify backend, their Google Analytics, their Google Ads, their Facebook Ads account, their TikTok Ads account. Like it's a lot of information we need up front. But if we don't have the time and we don't get to go through all that historical data, right? 
We won't have any clue whatsoever if we can actually achieve the goal that our client has or not. But every agency needs to do some sort of due diligence on your business to make sure if you're a good fit or not. And this is where most agencies go wrong. They think they can just jump on a quick 45 minute call with you and then collect some money. But it's also where you as the client go wrong because you obviously believe the person on a sales call when they after 30 minutes ask for credit card details because they asked you three questions. They're your average order value, your conversion rate and your goals for the future. And they told you that that was enough to actually make them 100% certain that they can achieve your big dreams or big goals that you've set for your business. But you need to realize that marketing is important and it's hard. It's something that every single business in the world needs to become successful, but not every business will be successful. So the agency you end up picking to actually work with you and try to achieve your goals, right? They should have 100% conviction in your success and they should be able to back it up with reasons why. And they just won't have any valid reasons unless they spend a good considerate amount of time time in your ad account and your backend systems and analytics to actually understand what the hell is going on in your business. And honestly, not a lot of clients enjoy our vetting process. And we've actually lost clients because of this, because they just don't want to go through the hassle of sharing all that data and all that access, right? But also know that every single client that ends up signing on appreciate the effort because we care about the results and our reputation. And if you offer them a chance to work with us, it's because we see amazing potential in our clients. So just keep this in mind. You should ask your agency hard questions. You should also observe what sort of questions they're asking you as a client. And then you should observe the vetting and sales process and make sure that they take their time to actually vet you out so they know what they can do for you. So with that being said, that pretty much wraps up today's video. I hope you found some real value in this. If you have any questions or any feedback, make sure to leave it in the comments down below. Also, if you like this video, please make sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I would massively appreciate that. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.